Hello, and welcome to Sandman Stories Presents. Today we have two stories featuring Anansi. They are from the Ashanti people of Ghana. In the first story, Anansi finds an ingenious way to get food, but he neglects his family. And in the second story, Anansi is very crafty, but Lizard betrays him, and there's a penalty when you cross Anansi. Okay, let's begin. Thunder and Anansi There had been a long and severe famine in the land where Anansi lived. He had been quite unable to obtain food for his poor wife and family. One day, gazing desperately out to sea, he saw rising from the midst of the water a tiny island with a tall palm tree upon it. He determined to reach this tree, if any means provided possible, and climb it in the hope of finding a few nuts to reward him. How to get there was the difficulty. This, however, solved itself when he reached the beach, for there lay the means to his hand, and in the shape of an old broken boat. It certainly did not look very strong, but Anansi decided to try it. His first six attempts were unsuccessful. A great wave dashed him back on the beach each time he tried to put off. He was persevering, however, and at the seventh trial was successful in getting away. He steered the battered old boat as best he could, and at length reached the palm tree of his desire. Having tied the boat to the trunk of the tree, which grew almost straight out of the water, he climbed toward the nuts. Plucking all he could reach, he dropped them one by one down to the boat. To his dismay, everyone missed the boat and fell instead into the water until only the last one remained. This he aimed even more carefully than the others, but it also fell into the water and disappeared from his hungry eyes. He had not tasted even one, and now all were gone. He could not bear the thought of going home empty-handed, so, in his despair, he threw himself into the water too. To his complete astonishment, instead of being drowned, he found himself standing on the sea bottom in front of a pretty little cottage. From the latter came an old man, who asked Anansi what he wanted so badly that he had come to Thunder's cottage to seek it. Anansi told his tale of woe, and Thunder showed himself most sympathetic. He went into the cottage and fetched a fine cooking pot, which he presented to Anansi, telling him that he need never be hungry again. The pot would always supply enough food for himself and his family. Anansi was most grateful and left Thunder with many thanks. Being anxious to test the pot at once, Anansi only waited till he was again seated in the old boat to say, Pot, pot, what you used to do for your master, do now for me. Immediately, good food of all sorts appeared. Anansi ate a hearty meal, which he very much enjoyed. On reaching land again, his first thought was to run home and give all his family a good meal from his wonderful pot. A selfish, greedy fear prevented him. What if I should use up all the magic of the pot on them and have nothing more left for myself? Better keep the pot a secret, then I can enjoy a meal when I want one. So, his mind full of this thought, he hid the pot. He reached home, pretending to be utterly worn out with fatigue and hunger. There was not a grain of food to be had anywhere. His wife and poor children were weak with want of it, but selfish Anansi took no notice of that. He congratulated himself at the thought of his magic pot, now safely hidden in his room. There he retired from time to time when he felt hungry and enjoyed a good meal. His family got thinner and thinner, but he grew plumper and plumper. They began to suspect some secret and determined to find it out. His eldest son, Kwekutsin, had the power of changing himself into any shape he chose, so he took the form of a tiny fly and accompanied his father everywhere. At last, Anansi, feeling hungry, entered his room and closed the door. Next, he took the pot and had a fine meal. Having replaced the pot in its hiding place, he went out on the pretense of looking for food. 
as soon as he was safely out of sight, Kweku Sin fetched out the pot and called all his hungry family to come at once. They had as good a meal as their father had had. When they finished, Mrs. Anansi, to punish her husband, said she would take the pot down to the village and give everybody a meal. This she did, but, alas, in working to prepare so much food at one time, the pot grew too hot and melted away. What was to be done now? Anansi would be so angry. His wife forbade everyone to mention the pot. Anansi returned, ready for his supper, and, as usual, went into his room, carefully shutting the door. He went to the hiding place. It was empty. He looked around in consternation. No pot was to be seen anywhere. Someone must have discovered it. His family must be the culprits. He would find a means to punish them. Saying nothing to anyone about the matter, he waited till morning. As soon as it was light, he started off towards the shore where the old boat lay. Getting into the boat, it started of its own accord and glided swiftly over the water, straight for the palm tree. Arrived there, Anansi attached the boat as before and climbed the tree. This time, unlike the last, the nuts almost fell into his hands. When he aimed them at the boat, they fell easily into it, not one as before dropping into the water. He deliberately took them and threw them overboard, immediately jumping after them. As before, he found himself in front of Thunder's cottage, with Thunder waiting to hear his tale. This he told, the old man showing the same sympathy as he had previously done. This time, however, he presented Anansi with a fine stick and bade him goodbye. Anansi could scarcely wait till he got into the boat. So anxious was he to try the magic properties of his new gift. Stick, stick, he said. What you used to do for your master, do for me also. The stick began to beat him so severely that, in a few minutes, he was obliged to jump into the water and swim ashore, leaving boat and stick to drift away where they pleased. Then he returned sorrowfully homeward, bemoaning his many bruises and wishing he had acted more wisely from the beginning. The end. Okay, and story number two. Why the lizard continually moves his head up and down. In a town not very far from Anansi's home lived a great king. This king had three beautiful daughters, whose names were kept a secret from everybody except their own family. One day their father made a proclamation that his three daughters would be given as wives to any man who could find out their names. Anansi made up his mind to do so. He first bought a large jar of honey and set off for the bathing place of the king's daughters. Arrived there, he climbed to the top of a tree on which grew some very fine fruit. He picked some of this fruit and poured honey over it. When he saw the princesses approaching, he dropped the fruit on the ground and waited. The girls thought the fruit dropped of its own accord, and one of them ran forward to pick it up. When she tasted it, she called out to her sisters by name to exclaim on its sweetness. Anansi dropped another, which the second princess picked up, she in her turn calling out the names of the other two. In this fashion, Anansi found out all the names. As soon as the princesses had gone, Anansi came down from the tree and hurried into the town. He went to all the great men and summoned them to a meeting at the king's palace on the morrow. He then visited his friend the lizard to get him to act as herald at the court next day. He told the lizard the three names, and the latter was to sound them through his trumpet when the time came. Early next morning the king and his court were assembled as usual. All the great men of the town appeared, as Anansi had requested. Anansi stated his business, reminding the king of his promise to give his three daughters to the man who had found out their names. The king demanded to hear the latter, whereupon Lizard sounded them on his trumpet. The king and his courtiers were much surprised. His majesty, however, could not break the promise he made of giving his daughters to the man who named them. He accordingly gave them to Mr. Lizard. Anansi was very angry and explained that he had told the names to Lizard so that he ought to get at least two of the girls while Lizard could have the third. The king refused. 
Anansi then begged hard for even one, but that was also refused. He went home in a very bad temper, declaring that he would be revenged on Lizard for stealing his wives away. He thought over the matter very carefully, but could not find a way of punishing Lizard. At last, however, he had an idea. He went to the king and explained that he was setting off next morning on a long journey. He wished to start very early and so begged the king's help. The king had a fine cock, which always crowed at daybreak to waken the king if he wished to get up early. Anansi begged that the king would command the cock to crow next morning, that Anansi might be sure of getting off in time. This the king readily promised. As soon as night fell, Anansi went by back way to the cock's sleeping place, seized the bird quickly, and killed it. He then carried it to Lizard's house, where all were in bed. There he quietly cooked the cock, placed the feathers under Lizard's bed, and put some of the flesh on a dish close to Lizard's hand. The wicked Anansi took some boiling water and poured it into poor Lizard's mouth, thus making him dumb. When morning came, Anansi went to the king and reproached him for not letting the cock crow. The king was much surprised to hear that it had not obeyed his commands. He sent one of his servants to find and bring the cock to him, but of course the servant returned empty-handed. The king then ordered them to find the thief. No trace of him could be found anywhere. Anansi then cunningly said to the king, I know Lizard is a rogue because he stole my three wives from me. Perhaps he is the thief. Accordingly, the men went to search Lizard's house. There, of course, they found the remnants of the cock, cooked ready to eat, and his feathers under the bed. They questioned Lizard, but the poor animal was unable to reply. He could only move his head up and down helplessly. They thought he was refusing to speak, so they dragged him before the king. To the king's questions, he could only return the same answer, and his majesty got very angry. He did not know that Anansi had made the poor animal dumb. Lizard tried very hard to speak, but in vain. He was accordingly judged guilty of theft, and as punishment his wives were taken away from him and given to Anansi. Since then, lizards have always had a way of moving their heads helplessly backward and forward, as if saying, How can anyone be so foolish as to trust Anansi? The End Oh, Anansi, you troublemaker, you. In the first story, I like how Thunder didn't give away the special powers of the stick. The story reminded me a little bit of Strega Nona by Tomi de Paolo. That's another good story that you should go check out. In the second story, I felt a bit bad for Lizard, just because he seemed to have chanced into getting the three wives. But messing with Anansi is just asking for trouble. The podcast shout-out is to El Radio del Barrio. Hosted by Dietz and Jacqueline. Like they say, they are numero uno in el region, numero uno in su corazón. This is an hour of Mexican music and conversation. My Spanish is still pretty weak, but I'm able to understand a lot, and they throw out a lot of English words in here and there. So, if you like Mexican music, or want to brush up on your Spanish, or just hang out with a couple of cool folks, go give them a listen. And if you like it as much as I do, go and give them a five-star rating on iTunes or Podchaser. And the listener shout-out is to the Demarara Mahica region of Guiana. You are 100% of my listeners in Guiana. Thank you, and good night.